Well, here it is, Tuesday, February the 13th, the day before Valentine's Day, and boy, we're in one of those rainy periods here in Southern California, so we've come out to Culver City. This is the Bologna Creek right here. I'm standing with John and Amar. John, you all are with the LA City. We're with Sanitation Stormwater Management Division. Stormwater Management, and pull out that thing you were telling me about that gets you so upset. Look at this, Louie. Uh, this is styrofoam. You find it all over the place. You, you look down here, you can see it all behind us. Yeah. The problem with this stuff, first of all, it fouls the beaches. The tourists don't like to see it. We don't like to see it. But look how it crumbles up here. Yeah, look at this, Louie, how it breaks up it into breaks little up. pieces. Little tiny pieces. And, and this is what the birds eat and choke them all to death. And fill them up so they don't want to eat anymore. They get clogged up and they die. Well, this is what's filling up our storm drains. Here comes the rain again, and we are here today to kind of set up a story we shot a couple of years ago during the summertime when it was dry, and we took a whole tour of the storm drains. You'll recognize this man, Amar, because he's the one who drove backwards <laughs> in a truck <laughs> in the storm drain. Right. You remember that? Yep. Yeah. And you also remember when we were going through one of the drains and I leaned over and picked up a rock that had a devil's face on it? Yes. I've still got that in my <laughs> office. I forgot to bring it here today, but I use it as a paperweight. This is a great time for all of us to be reminded of our storm drain system, which of course doesn't get used that much, but when it rains like it's raining these days, uh, it's very important for us. You can just look at this trash right here and of course this is nothing compared to what is washing out into the ocean and all of this stuff stays just like it is right here just breaks up into smaller bits but we had a great time that day it was warm it was summertime we drove all through the storm drains and had a great time be sure and pay special attention to a Mars backing abilities in the storm drain. Have you ever seen that show? No, but I'm going to now. Tonight. I've been with him out there. He's good. <laughs> yeah, he's good at backing up in the storm drains. Here it is. Let's flash back in time to a much drier, happier day when we toured LA's storm drains. You're watching member supported KCET. Visiting with Huell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. Well, this is going to be a real adventure today. We are here with Chuck Ellis and a group of the guys from the, and I can't, it, this is a very technical government name. It's the department, it, it's the Los Angeles Department. The whole name is the City of Los Angeles Department of Public Works, Bureau of Engineering, Stormwater Management Division. And then there's some sections under that if you want to keep going down. <laughs> and we are here, uh, basically today our adventure is going to be to find out what happens to the water when it falls down to us in the form of rain or anything else that's put into the drains of the City of Los Angeles what kind of a system we have to take care of all of that. Right. Uh, a lot of people don't understand there's sort of an underground freeway system that most of us never see. And within the city boundaries, it's 1,500 miles of underground pipes and open channels. And today we'll get a look at some of that. And what people don't understand is the storm drains is one of the two drainage systems in the city. Inside your house, your toilet, your dishwasher, your washing machine, all of that goes through sewer pipes and is treated at a sewer treatment plant, a wastewater treatment plant. But the storm drains, they collect everything outside the house. And all of that is taken straight to the ocean. There's no treatment or anything like that. So really, we're standing on the beach. It might as well be Malibu, but just a little bit off the beach because all the water that's going to come here is eventually going to go straight into the ocean. And what's dramatic about saying we're standing at the beach is we are quite a ways from the beach. Where are we right now? We're in Sombrero Canyon, which is north of Silmar, and we're right on the edge of the National Forest in uh -huh. the northern San Fernando Valley. And I guess, I would guess the city line is right here at the edge of this canyon somewhere. So we're a good 30 miles or more. Yeah. Maybe more from the ocean right Well, there. yeah, and this one, uh, the San Fernando Valley drains down the L.A. River and ends up in Long Beach Harbor. So really, from here to Long Beach, we might be closer to 40, yeah. 50 miles. Now, Mike, you were telling me a little earlier about what this is right here. Explain how this works. Uh, this is a flood control debris basin, and uh, initially what happens is water will fall on the ground above, and 
rinse down or a wash down the canyons and uh, um, you know the valleys in here. And what happens is the water will come in this basin, and it will collect in here and pond. And as it ponds up, it'll start um, falling through this perforated tower here. And this tower—that's so a drain right there. That drain for the water. leads directly into the to the storm drain system below us. It goes underneath this dam and goes into the storm drain system. And this can build up, you know, quite a depth. And there'll be sediments in the water and, you know, brush and, you know, I don't think people can understand how much. There's a lot of water. Uh, this thing is going to be full. You can see that it's just, we had a small rain recently. Um, and you can, you can see that they've graded it. But Yeah, they've it'll... cleaned it out. Yeah. So usually there would be a lot of debris in here. Oh, after each storm, they have to come in and clean it out to control the sediment buildup so the system works the way it's supposed to design to. You can see all of the erosion up on the yeah, hills where the all over. Yeah. yeah if you can imagine too when it rains you know just people living in their houses it may get this far out from the curb on their streets or they might drive through some flooded intersections in parts of the city but if you can imagine in a big rainstorm you're talking about a tv movie style flow coming in here huge amounts of water so there would be if we were here on a rainy day this place it'd be a lot of activity yes. here oh yeah definitely so our first stop is going to be right out here off in the distance, uh, how far away? Probably only about a half a mile away from where we're standing here. Okay, let's go. Okay, now we have come down the five freeway. This is the, this is Rinaldi over uh -huh. here, and we're now we're getting ready for the real exciting part of the adventure, right? Yeah, we're going to go down downstream from where we were, where the debris basin was. Comes down here on our way further south, all the way to the Look ocean. Look down so. here, Louis. This is, we're going to actually drive the vehicle down in this what is this called what's the technical name this is just an open channel and some people have these in their neighborhoods you know that run through the backs of some of the older neighborhoods most of what we have in our neighborhood is a storm drain we're probably underground somewhere so but we're going to be going actually under uh, ground we're going to drive through there we're going to go into some of the tunnels and take a look around there um the the problem with doing this, and to emphasize the, the it's, it's fun, but there's also some danger here when people get involved. You know, if there's a lot of water, that's one obvious thing. But then, like the people from Cal OSHA uh, can tell us that there's things that can go on there. Someone could dump something upstream. And okay, here's the guy from Cal OSHA who is here to talk to all of us about the dangers down there. Right. Um, some of the dangers that are down in a confined space such as this, where it's enclosed, are um, oxygen deprivation. Um, we have a buildup of toxic materials. We don't know what's been dumped down the storm drain system, so it's a, there's a potential for a buildup of some type of hazardous atmosphere. Well, what, what, I mean, it's nice to know that may happen. What if it's down there and we don't know it? How will it affect us? Oh, what we're going to do before we go in there is do some monitoring to make sure that it is a safe environment. Um, what do you mean? You have a machine or something? There's a monitor that measures the ox oxygen levels to make sure there's enough oxygen in there to support life. Um, we'll look for flammable atmospheres. We want to make sure that there's not a level in there that might, we might cause an explosion. Could the light from the camera set off an explosion? Yeah, that can, unless uh, the equipment's designed to be intrinsically safe. Well, where is your, is this the monitor? Yeah. I hope the batteries are working because you're beginning to get me nervous about all of this. I just charged it up before we, uh, this last night, so I made sure the batteries were. Uh, it says sort of gas tech there. Gas so tech, 402. It really does kind of it measure what's down there. Right, it measures the percent of oxygen to make sure there's an, enough oxygen. It'll measure explosive levels. This one also measures carbon monoxide and hydrogen sulfide. So even though we were kind of kidding about this, this really is serious. It is serious. We've, we've had people who have dropped into a space to clean something out, get down there and there's no air and they die. And the yeah. instant reaction of their uh, crewmate is to jump down there and save them and they die too. It is. Wow. Around the country there are a number of deaths every Over year. Over a third of the people that die in confined spaces are the rescuers. They're going wow. in to rescue the people that are actually in the confined space wow. doing a job. Okay, here we go. We're turning left. We're going right through the... Now this technically is underground, but really we're not under underground yet, are we? Right, there's a, there's a lot of these kind of tunnels around the city just to accommodate uh, a street overhead. 
or whatever development was there because a lot of times development came before the flood channel planning came, particularly lower in the older parts of the cities. Now, where is this water coming from that we're in right now? This could be some of it natural flow out of the mountains, and then a lot of it is just people overwatering their yards, maybe dumping a swimming pool, uh, washing cars, businesses that wash off the front. You know, I was thinking about the figure you gave us up at the very beginning, that on a sunny, bright day like this, there's still how many million gallons? A hundred million gallons a day. A hundred million gallons of water on a sunny day yeah. running off like this in Los Angeles. Think of the hottest day in September where there's not a breeze anywhere, and that day, a hundred million gallons hits the ocean. Wow. It's a, you know, this is a solvable problem. Just think about someone in your neighborhood or even at your own house. You turn the sprinklers on and go inside and you come out, the sidewalk is wet, there's some running down the street. None of that water accomplishes anything for your plants or your garden, but it, what it does do is what we talked about a little earlier where if there's oil on the street, the water rolls over it and picks up some of that oil and carries it down here. Mm -hmm. Now this looks clean to me. There's not a lot of debris in here. Well, we had, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, uh, what, two days ago, we had a pretty good rain in the area. And so all the debris up here were, has been, now it's washed out floating around in the ocean somewhere. Um, so many styrofoam cups and just junk. And a lot of people will just toss a garbage sack over because they don't want to deal with it. Or uh, they walk over near a tunnel, uh, near a tunnel when they're, you know, walking from fast food and toss the wrapper down here. Now, this is the first actual stuff we've seen coming in the main channel. What is this? Well, this is a, a connection line that feeds a series of, of storm drains or catch basins upstream. So there's residential upstream from us here. Uh, it could be that there's some construction upstream, that they're maybe building some more houses. And this uh, looks like it has sediment in it. Yeah, it looks that's like right. it has, right. it has, what, what do you think it is? It looks like sediment. Like Scott said, there's a lot of uh, silt, you know, uh, you know, dirt material, a clay, silts come in, they sedimentate, and then they get washed down by um, rainwater. Now, there's graffiti inside here. Yeah, if, could we walk back in there yeah, if we I wanted to? Probably shouldn't go too far in there. Because I know, I, I'm not suggesting we do that, but what if we did? What would, I mean, we could just go back for miles. Oh, yeah, you could go back quite a ways back there. I don't, I don't know how long the system goes back, but, um, you know, it's a big, pretty big diameter pipe, so it's probably feeding quite a bit of area. So, yeah, you can walk back as well, far as... Well, we're going to pass up uh, that adventure. You see the first split right there? Where yeah, so there's there? splits and intersections so going off. It's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller yeah. and smaller until it gets up. And look, here's, the, here's what the great citizens of Los Angeles, this is what we're putting into our bay, into the Santa Monica Bay, into the Pacific Ocean, because this is where it's all going to end up, right? Exactly. Yeah. It's going to go straight there. Can I pick this up? Uh, yeah. Oh, boy, I don't know about this. Get it close up on his hands so when they begin to sort of peel off. It's a painted rock. <laughs> look at this. I've never seen that. That's the first time I've seen that in the channel. Oh, well, look, you got so it. I'm going to keep this as a souvenir. <laughs> this is, I'm going to keep this. Okay. Definitely keep that. That's something new. What's a sad about this is, of course, we had a rain just a day ago, 24 hours ago. So this is a, an accumulation that's happened just, just in 24 hours. hours. Yeah. So I you, bet you it really gets nasty down that. here. It gets really ugly. And look, at, look what's around you. There's a uh, oil filter here. There's a windshield wiper blade there. Shoe. Styrofoam shoe. shoes. Looks like that might have been a diaper, some film. Who knows I mean, what this, this was? So this is like a dump. People yep. are using this for a dump. Here you go. This is a, a knife. knife. A murder weapon of some kind. Now, you, you're not picking this stuff up like I did. Well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> a knife. Look at this. Bring it over here so Louie can see. Phil. You know, my hand is beginning to itch a yeah, little bit. Yeah, you better bit. watch out. We got some film. I don't I know. I think I better watch. Is there a place I can wash my hand off? I think we might have some water in the, in the truck. I don't think it was such a good idea. What is this? I'm going to leave the knife here, but I'm going to keep the rock as a souvenir. I'm going to put it on my desk. Okay, the adventure continues. We're going really down deep down inside now. Now, there are whole 
maze of these tunnels. I mean, there are intersections all up and down here, aren't there? Well, it's, it's an amazing underground freeway system. And it, imagine this thing, 1,500 miles of it twisting underneath the streets of LA. Well, most of these large channels, too, were natural creeks or rivers that were just concreted in. So a lot of where you are as you go through the system is where it went before the system was there. But there Back was when nature control. was in charge. That's right, yeah, that's right. Okay, now we're on foot. We've stopped for a minute, and we're actually walking through one of these tunnels. And what, what are these, how far underground are we? This is this the... Let's look over a couple feet. It, this could be a storm drain for a street. The water will come in or across the street and drain right into this grate and drop down right where we are and then continue down from where we've been coming up on the, with the truck. So I can't tell from here, but you know, we might be on, um, right below uh, City Street. So whatever comes off the street comes right down in here, yeah. and during a rainstorm, it'd be a torrent down. Yeah, it would be, uh, you can imagine. I, th I don't think you'd be able to stand under it if it were a hard rain, because it would just knock you down. Yeah. Mike, we need to get you up front, too, yeah. because of the meter. Now, there are cobwebs up here. Yeah. It's kind of like an old movie, isn't it? That's strange. There's actually, in a lot of the storm drains, living, living ecosystems, besides rats and stuff like that. Um, ah, that's my question. What is, it the, what is the myth about alligators being in the storm drains of New York City? Do we have any in Los Angeles? Have you ever seen any animals down here? New York has huge ones, but we have a better system than New York and Los Angeles, so we don't have alligators. <laughs> Do you have animals down here yeah. at all? There are a lot of rodent populations. There's, uh, in places where there's a little more water than this, you have all kinds of minnows and fish. When they're open, a lot of birds, huge numbers of birds. So who live down in here? Yeah, oh, in the open parts, the birds do. Oops. Yeah, watch out for them. But no, no alligators? Never seen an alligator in my adventures in the storm drain system. But I actually did see some uh, freshwater crayfish in a system in this area um, on another channel. from the south because he says crayfish and not crawfish. What about crawfish? crawfish? I'm sorry. But, but now, that crawfish don't sound as exciting as alligators or... Well, that's what I can do. I mean, that's what I... I saw it. I mean, we looked at them. <laughs> we came down right after the riots and we saw television boxes, new shoes. Unbelievable. It was like a shopping mall down there. And you know those barcode readers they used to do inventory? Yeah. Dozens of them. People stole them thinking it's electronic, it must be something good. And then they just dumped them. Yeah, they couldn't figure out what it was. It's like you can see light, that's not too far away from daylight. So they're all kind of little side tunnels that come uh -huh. in here. You know, and these look are... at this silt here, the amount of dirt that has built up, just runoff from, from the land. Now this is interesting, I hadn't thought about this, but poor Amar has to back out of these tunnels to get us out of here. We've got a, uh... well this one's not too bad but sometimes they can back up for miles. Good grief. He's pretty good at it. How you doing, Amar? Okay, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to distract you. Slow Here down. we are, backing through a... Oh, oh. whoa! <laughs> okay, we have made it out of the tunnel. We're continuing. We're going to have to back all the way, aren't we? Almost all the way. Yeah. And we made it out without being gassed. That's right, we did. We're safe. This is very strange, backing. It also gets old very fast, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go, and what did we see? Here's our, here's our human, human beings in the channel. Now, these are kids down here, and I don't know whether we want to put their faces on camera because we might be liable in some way, but they are definitely not supposed to be down here, are they? No, they're not, and it's... it's it's just dangerous. Like, as, if they've been running, you've seen them slip. Um, they can slip and hurt themselves. If they have a cut on their legs and you get some of this water in it, you know, it's just not going to be... Uh, it can get infected. It can cause a lot of problems. We just, just kind of politely tell them, you know, you guys have a good day, be careful. 
You guys realize you're not supposed to be in here, don't you? Huh? You realize you're not supposed to be in here? Okay, climb out as soon as you can, will you? Yeah. yeah. Be careful, right. too. It's slippery. Wow. Kids in the drainage tunnels. That's not good. Well, they ran a good, what, 50, 60 yards before they finally gave up yeah. and slowed down. Do a lot of people come down in here? I think there's a lot more than we know. There's uh, There's a pretty good population of homeless people that will find a quiet place um, in a channel and, and sleep there or something. Now we have come about 20 miles from where we were before. Yeah, at least. This is still the drain coming down here. Where are we now? We're now in the Arroyo Seco channel, which comes out of Angeles Crest, comes all the way down here. And heads into the LA River, which is right down here. This is the 110 freeway going to Pasadena and we came we stopped here because look over here up on the side someone has done a little artwork Peter what is that Peter Q and Danny G G July 1994 have done a little bit of artwork Amar you spotted this and brought us here to show it to us that's right I saw it yesterday when I came by to double check on the entrance and the exit and uh, there it is. Well, it it's kind of interesting to see this kind of work. Why would somebody, why do you think, go to all the trouble to put something like that on the side of a drainage channel? It's, I think there's probably a lot of really talented people who have no, uh, no canvas to paint on. And, you know, the, you know, the mural programs and the anti-graffiti and the anti-tagger things, when they put those people in an environment where they can actually paint and produce something with their artwork, they get outstanding stuff. Wow, this thing must be, what, is that 30 feet this tall? This is big. This is beautiful. And well, it's been there for six months. Well, congratulations to Peter Q and Danny G for your painting of Betty Boop right here on the side of the channel. We're going right in the river. Yep. Right by the 5 uh, freeway where the 110 takes off. Oh, wow. Now, by this place in the river, the reason there's so much water here is there have been a lot of these channels feeding into it, right? The entire San Fernando Valley. That water's moving fast. Too. Now, are we are we heading for a pipe? Is that I mean, where are yeah. we going? We're going to go down here and look at one more uh, example of, of a, one of the really large pipes that comes in here that we go take a little bit of, a little bit of a walk up. You know, we talked earlier about the fact that the system is 1,500 miles, and it's hard to believe that this underground freeway is, has so many large entrances, all of it bringing the stormwater down into the, the L.A. River on this side. And so here's a couple of the big, other big channels. These will just go up into these neighborhoods and kind of spread out. So we've got two channels here, two more down here, and Mike has gotten the, his gas reading meter back out again because if we're going to go inside we got to check the atmosphere before we even get close to the so going there inside. could be gas even coming out of these things sure, you don't know. well let's go up and see because this is getting toward the end of our trip uh now see this is what i think of as a traditional the kind of pipes that people maybe live in uh -huh. now this is the kind of a of an idea that I had that this whole day was going to be kind of in a round pipe. Uh, you kind of get the idea that people could actually be living back here. Uh, Listen to the echo. There could be people back here. I mean, because all around the city in storm drains, people do live there. This is sort of that. Uh, Come on, uh, walk ahead of us, Louie, yes. and take a look that image you have in an old movie of the Paris sewers, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't know whether the mics will be able to pick up the, hello, hello. You want to get up ahead of, just a little bit, Mike, with the detector for the gas? Oh, yeah, okay, so he's checking right. the gas. Gas okay? There, yeah. We're fixing to turn a corner of some kind up here. And these, this pipe would go back. It could go miles. Miles, miles, miles. underneath the city. Watch you. There's a little bit of water in the middle, Louie. Okay, you know the one wow. that... Here, we're, we're coming up. up to a bigger one here. I can't tell. We are. Yeah, 
Yeah. Oh, look, it's a it's like a an intersection here. Okay. Okay, watch it, Louie. You, there's some water down here on the ground. Let's walk right through it. What do you think? Hello? Going? Hello? Can you see the curve up there? There's a little curve right ahead, right? Or a split of some kind? No, it's a turn. Well, let's just go up a little bit and see around the turn and see if we can see anything. I thought I heard something up there. Probably. Yeah, the cars are going Oh, the car is going over. Now, it's perfectly dry right here. Yeah. But in just a matter of minutes, it could be a rushing. So yeah. wouldn't it be dangerous for someone to live here? It would be. But, you know, because that's one of the reasons so many people come, a lot of the homeless population in the country migrate here is because it rains so seldom. Ah. So you, what, maybe except for 10 times a year, you're pretty safe in here. What's that? Uh, I don't know. It's like some trash. Oh, it's just some trash. See, my mind is going crazy now. There's a drain that comes right to the roof right there. Yeah, it's dripping. Look how mossy yeah. it is. Oh, oh wow. when that light goes up, it's <laughs> it gets dark <laughs> fast. <laughs> I just want to go around the curve. Wow. You oh. know, that's what's amazing. Be very careful, Louie. This is covered in, uh, it's really slick. And to think that there are 1,500 miles of this under the city. Uh, it's, you're right. It's a whole nother. Look at this. That just comes now, down that doesn't look very pleasant. Oh, my gosh. Tilt down a little bit, Louie, and look at this. This is not pleasant. Ooh, boy. Ooh. See, it just keeps on going. It's, I'm surprised it hasn't started getting smaller yet. It's still big. Yeah, well, this is draining a huge area from above. Well, let's see. I guess how much further do we need to go? Well, I hate to say it, but it all begins to look the same after a while, doesn't <laughs> it? There's not a lot of scenery down here, is there? No. We didn't have time to decorate, so <laughs> we just kind of left it the way it was. And our gas meter never no, it's fine. We're, showed we're anything. Okay. So there's got to be some there's got to be some openings up ahead to keep some air down here to keep it fresh. Yeah. Well, it's kind of an interesting view. You can see the light at the end of the tunnel down there, and to think that this whole system is set up just for water drainage. It, I feel like I'm walking up a, 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 some. Jurassic Park animal's spinal cord. Well, see, I keep expecting something to come out. <laughs> Either a person or an animal or something. I bet we can find a bunch of people around here. We may not, they may not be too, too happy to greet us, but we can probably find them. It's kind of strange that there's this netherworld in Los Angeles because it's such a huge metropolis. You, you know, you don't think of these things underneath the streets. All the way back in here, and here we are back outside. What's the beep? I'm turning it off. We're oh, out of the, we're okay. Out of the we're okay. So we're out in the open air. <laughs> now, as we were getting ready to leave, here's what we spotted. Found some some indication, some oil in the water. You know, and, you know, somebody could have just dumped that in the street. We don't know, and that's what we're trying to. The message we're trying to get is, you just got to pay attention. This goes somewhere. This goes to the ocean eventually. I mean, this goes right in the water goes directly to the ocean. So we just got to, everybody's got to do their part and, you know, help each other and take care of the problems. Pollutions, you know. So what, somebody could have been dumping oil out of their car. Yeah, well, that could, yeah, you don't know what happened. It's hard to tell, right? I mean, there's so many operations day-to-day -to -day life that have oil in it or stuff that's, you know, toxic to the environment that little, every little thing counts. And that's, yeah. that's what, what we got to pay attention to is the little things that matter. We've seen the graffiti. We've seen what looked to be taggers earlier up in the other side. Um, it's very easy to watch it all on TV and, and just shake your head about how uh, society is going to hell. But all of those problems, just like all of these problems, are individuals who need to take in one more second in their lives to do something just a little different. We're not talking about major, major changes. We're talking yeah. about asking people to make small, small changes in their daily routines. And that'll go a long way to cleaning these up, because what we're seeing here is part of 100 million gallons every day. Yeah. So that, to me, that number is so large. And that's on a slow day. Yeah. Uh, it, this has been a slow day. Well, and imagine us sitting here in this huge channel, 